The One Shot Glaive is back in Destiny 2 and it's stronger than ever. A crafted Judgment of Kelgarath with enhanced surrounding can give us a 214 damage one shot. The Yeet Machine 2.0 is here. <laughs> with any class. You don't need Radiant or any other buff to get you to the full 214 damage shot. So that means you can use a Titan, Warlock, or a Hunter, whatever your go-to is, and still instantly delete any other Guardian, no matter what their resilience level is, and no matter the kind of class setup you have. Let's go over how to craft the Glaive for the easiest one shot of your life, what is happening with the damage behind the scenes, and what are the best methods for success on every class. This build has completely rekindled my desire to finish out my Iron Banner grind. I'm legit looking forward to jumping back in again because it's just so much fun. I was testing out other unique builds with the seasonal bow and trace rifle for Season of the Seraph, but the nature of the new Iron Banner mode and the new matchmaking were both eating my desire to keep experimenting. Then it happened. Post-match, my last red border for Judgment of Kelgarath dropped and I'd been waiting for this moment. I already did a deep dive on all the perks for Judgment of Kelgarath, and in it I hinted at this build, but because it required the enhanced version, it was all just theory crafting without actually being able to showcase any of it in action. So I got my last red border, and here's how I crafted it. This build essentially maxes out the range for the fastest projectile velocity we can get on a glaive. On the Enigma, you can just use Impulse Amplifier to do that, but here we're going to need that perk slot for our enhanced surrounded, the key to all this. So we're pushing the range as much as possible due to not having having impulse amplifier. First off, I'm going to craft this with a range masterwork. Then I'm adding super cooled accelerator because it adds range without taking away any shield duration stat. Next, add Accurize Rounds, and you've maxed out your range at 100 without sacrificing any shield duration, because that's already pretty low. I'm tempted to run Swap Mag here, but with this build, you really won't be hot swapping much. It'll kind of be up to you if it's worth it for that one. Next up, I highly, highly encourage you to run Overflow. I emphasize it in my full review, but it's incredible with this build. As you're getting your one shots, you're walking over their ammo and auto reloading your next shot. Even overflowing the mag up to eight rounds so don't feel like you have to enhance this perk because just getting eight shots is crazy ambush the origin trait doesn't increase your damage at all in pvp and your range is already maxed but the extra handling could be nice for your first engagement then finally the key to it all enhance surrounded if you've watched my original guide, you know, a 47% damage buff to the glaive projectile when you are within 15 meters of three enemies. It must be enhanced. The normal version of Surrounded only gives 36.5%. Just a reminder, the Surrounded perk was updated this season so that Surrounded spec is integrated into the perk. So you don't need that mod anymore. You just get the max amount of damage automatically. So this frees up the weapon mod slot for something like freehand grip or targeting adjuster. Now, 47% buff. That buffs your damage up to 214 a shot. You're one-shotting absolutely anyone. Previously, the damage on Luberry's Rune with Enhanced Surrounded was only 192 damage, which only kills up to 6 resilience in one shot. You could push this to 10 resil using that build while Radiant, but that limits you to only Solar subclasses, and only Hunter gets the Radiant for free. So that's why Judgment of Kelgarath's stronger aggressive frame with Enhanced Surrounded is such a big deal. It lets you hit 214 a shot with enhanced surrounded without any extra damage buffs like the old version of the Yeet Machine. This frees you up to use any class, which is helpful for making the build more effective. Let's get into a few of the best setups here. Any Void class is going to have a great time with this stronger one-shot glaive, because you have access to Echo of Starvation. Echo of Starvation grants you Devour on orb pickups. Once you have Devour rolling, you can heal yourself completely and reset the Devour timer anytime you get a one-shot glaive kill. Between that and the damage reduction from the glaive shield you are rolling through enemy teams you don't have to rely on your allies creating the orbs for devour either you can set up any solar helmet to create orbs on solar weapon double kills and so anytime you get a streak going that instant heal devour from the orb you created will be sitting there waiting for you Void Warlock in particular takes Devour to a new level. You can use the Secant Filaments Exotic to give you Devour on demand with an Empowering Rift, and then stack it on top of Echo of Starvation to keep Devour rolling as you get your one-shot streak going. 
Pair it with the movement speed from Blink to put yourself in what would usually be a really dumb situation, and you've set yourself up for a lot of fun. This is one of the best setups I've found for the new one-shot glaive, as it's just so easy to get it going and it has a lot of potential for long killing streaks, as you're now killing up to 10 Razil with this new glaive. Void Hunters are also great for this enhanced surrounded glaive as you not only have access to Echo of Starvation, but you can go invisible to gain the perfect flank on a group of enemy guardians. Even just jumping into a group while invisible creates some hilarious results. Titans used to be the best way to run a Yeet Machine Glaive as you can proc Radiant with a shoulder charge into a group of enemies and then swap to the Glaive for Enhanced Surrounded, but now that they are open to all classes, I'm not going to focus on Titan too much in this video. You could easily use a bulky Stasis Titan to give you more damage resistance in encounters, but Arc Titans with a Juggernaut Shield could be great for an initial approach too. An amplified Arc 3.0 Jug Titan with the speed boost and a one-shot Glaive sounds pretty scary. Which reminds me, Arc 3.0 Hunters have Blink now, and that is a fantastic way to run this as well. It's hard for me to take off the invis with how easy that is to get yourself into the ideal surrounded situation, but Blink is a ton of fun, and that setup could be perfect for you. Some other tips for using this build with Judgment of Kelgarath, the turrets from the new Iron Banner mode actually activate Surrounded, so you could just run through invis or blink through them and have your one shot ready for whoever's on the other side. I can't even tell you how many times I did this the past two nights. Now, on top of all of the one-shot stuff, this thing does a really good job of slaying out regardless of if you have the one-shot ready or not. It fires slower, but it hits so dang hard that cleanups are a breeze. You're mainly going to be using it in sixes, so even if you don't get the kill, just one little tick of damage from a teammate will end your opponent. For parrying, I've been using the new Cascade Point Auto Rifle Lobrox C to do some crazy follow-up shots after a glaive kill. On the complete other side, I recommend to running around with a lightweight weapon to get around the map faster. I've been using my trusty farewell sidearm I love, or the new Trials of Osiris bow, they both feel fantastic for getting into bad situations, which are good situations for this setup. Crafted seasonal trace rifle and bow reviews on the way, I was just so excited to get this one out due to how fun the setup was. It totally has me amped, so I had to share. This has been Lego Lift Flash. Until next time, GG.